Azarine on Apopka Vineland, A.D. Mims Road. That is our home church as well. And um, he's going to be giving us some good information. This is a very special month for um, Christians worldwide. It's Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us, Pastor. Thank you for having me, too. <laughs> and you're going to tell, for those who are saying, what is Pentecost or what is that about? Glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, the word pente, or Pentecost, comes mm -hmm. from the Hebrew word penta means five, mm -hmm. right, and part of that 50. It was a 50-day after Passover okay. that the Jewish people, well, the, Israel, the Israelites would celebrate a very special feast. Mm -hmm. And um, hence, Pentecost, right? right? Uh, that's a significant day also for the Christian community mm -hmm. in that um, 50 days after Christ was resurrected, uh, the Holy Spirit was, God poured out his Holy Spirit on his church. Mm -hmm. So the Christian faith is based on historic events. That's things that have happened in the past. Mm -hmm. So things like the birth of Christ, on which we refer to as the incarnation, mm -hmm. the uh, crucifixion of Christ, which we refer to as the atonement, and the resurrection of Christ, which is ultimate victory. Mm -hmm. So those are past events. But what about the present? What do what is there? What, do, what what's the link between those past events and the present? Right. So we celebrate the past, but there are which are events, but there are current experiences so the presence of the holy spirit is what we talk about when it relates to what we experience now because mm -hmm. you know there are a lot of things that people we celebrate but they are only historic events right and they have no relevance to the present mm -hmm. right but the christian faith has both historic event and present experiences mm -hmm. so pentecost while it is a historic event it happened at a particular time but God still continues to pour out his spirit today right. on individuals. Mm -hmm. So that happens to fall 50 days after uh, Passover mm -hmm. or 50 days after the crucifixion. It, it, is not, it doesn't happen on the same, in the same month, mm -hmm. just as Easter doesn't fall in the same month all the time. Right. Neither does Pentecost. Okay. So this year, Pentecost is going to be the second Sunday of June. But it's always in June. No, it's not no? always in June. Sometimes, <laughs> it's, sometimes it's in May. Oh, okay. If, if okay. Easter comes early, oh, right, right, then, then it's if in it May. Comes 50 days from that, then it would be in May. Right. Yeah. Right. So this year, Pentecost is going to be, Pentecost Sunday mm -hmm. is going to be the 9th of June. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our church is going to be celebrating that weekend from Friday to mm -hmm. Sunday mm -hmm. with three specific events. We are going to be having a church service the 7th. Mm -hmm. That's the Sat Friday evening mm -hmm. at 7 o'clock. We're going to be having a church service on Saturday evening. We are having special speakers as well. Uh, and that's you, at 7 on Saturday? At 7 p.m., okay. yeah. I don't know if you want to call me a special speaker, but I'm going to be speaking <laughs> the, the Saturday yeah. night. All right. Yeah. Uh, Sunday, uh, Friday night, we'll be having our Reverend Lomax. Um, Lomax, oh my gosh, I forgot his last name. Mm -hmm. he's, from, uh, he's from Miami, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Fountain Church okay. in Miami. And then Sunday morning, we're going to be having Reverend Dr. Um, Edna Morugan, mm -hmm. who will be speaking Sunday morning. Now, Sunday evening at 5 o'clock, there is going to be a marriage seminar. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to segue into that, into that a little bit. One of the statements made about Pentecost, or on the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. was that Peter said to the people, to the audience, this promise is for you and for your children mm -hmm. and to those who are far off. The Holy Spirit sometimes seems to be, the topic seems to be centered around adults, mm -hmm. right? Um, what, do, what do our children know about being filled with the Holy Spirit? You know, we, we, our children know a lot the popular songs, the popular artists, mm -hmm. you know, popular movies, uh, cartoons, etc. But how aware are they of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. family is going to be one of the issues we're going to be, we're going to be uh, focusing on okay. on uh, the Sunday evening, the 9th. Okay. And we're going to be having 
the marriage uh, marriage, marriage seminar, seminar. Mm -hmm. led by Dr. Paul Watson. Okay, and that right. what time is that? That's going to be at five o'clock. Okay, five o'clock Sunday right. the ninth. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Thank you for and having me. There's no issues. charge for anything. No charge. No Absolutely charge. free. It's so good. everyone, come on out. <laughs> yes. All we all requires is your time. Yes. Yes. Right. So thank you so much, Pastor Benjamin. Thanks for allowing me to share too. And we will see you tomorrow. Uh, yes, ma'am. Looking forward to that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. So we're gonna switch gears now, and our um, usual show with um, First Sergeant Dahlia S. Pew Jones. Good evening, Orlando. I always feel like I'm messing up your name when I say Espute. I know, and after all these years, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's my Jamaican accent. Yeah, mine too. I don't get mad. <laughs> it's yeah. all good. Yes. So uh, you have some wonderful people. Welcome. Welcome. Yes. Alexis. yes. Our co-presenter, uh, co Yes. Um, uh, Marsha. Mm -hmm. And hello, Marsha. Hi. I'm sure she'll introduce again. herself. Nice to see you again. Yes, yes. And our special guest. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The the uh, army's finest, <laughs> <laughs> Major Alexis Carter, uh -huh. cool. United States Army Re uh, Reserves. Yes. Is here joining us again today. Mm -hmm. We wanted to bring him back, mm -hmm. you know, to go over um, all our special legal needs. Yeah. Yeah. And his daughter is yes. here. She's off camera. Yes, welcome. Yes, she's here. We might we might get her to say something a little later. I hope we'll so. See. We'll see. I hope so. So she can, you know, like encourage the youths in the community. There you go. Yeah. Okay. All right, great. So where do we start? Um first of all, let me say thank you all for serving. Um it's it's a very honorable thing to do and we can never say enough thanks or you can never be repaid for the service that you did, your sacrificial service to this country and worldwide cause, because you help in other areas. So thank you so much. And what exactly will we be talking about today? While Noel and um, Daly have their little sidebar. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, definitely yeah. wanted to uh, take, take a moment to acknowledge, you know, we all enjoyed a great weekend. Uh, last weekend there was Orlando Carnival, but you know, nationally, we recognize uh, Memorial Day, which is a moment to yes. commemorate all yes. the service members who, you know, paid the ultimate mm -hmm. price. Mm -hmm. um, a little unknown fact about the origins of Memorial Day mm -hmm. is actually started by slaves uh, back in the uh, mid 1800s during the Civil War. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of you know, dead bodies and mm -hmm. uh, service members on both sides, the Union and the Rebels, mm -hmm. who um, weren't properly uh, interned. And wow. the slaves came by and decorated the graves, made them plots, mm -hmm. and it was originally called Decoration Day. Mm -hmm. And I can't re quite remember the name, but there was a, uh, a rebel general who saw what was happening, saw what was going on, and said, mm -hmm. you know, from this day forward, mm -hmm. we're going to continue this uh, tradition, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, it later grew from being called, you know, Decoration Day to Memorial Day. So well, that's a little I don't know how fact. many people knew that very important fact. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of yeah. glad you brought that up. Because I was going to see uh, what you guys thought about that um, reference Memorial Day. There was not controversy, I say, but there was kind of like conversation about what do you say uh, right. to people on that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, what made me think about that, because uh, one of my coworkers gave me an article. People um, tend to say Happy Memorial Day. Yes, yes. yes. So that was the controversy. What do, yeah. what do you say for that? Mm -hmm. And um, I, was, I was given an article from um, Orange County Commissioner. Uh, District 5, Emily Bonilla had put out because apparently uh, her aide, and she put this out <laughs> afterwards, sent out uh, uh, supposed to have been a reference that she wanted to, you know, address Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. But her aide sent out a wrong message, wow. or published a yeah. wrong message saying Happy Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. So um, she actually came back and recanted, and um, she was uh, very disturbed by that, which was I thought was kind of... Uh, 
unusual or whatever is that she actually, I don't want to say called out, but that's what she right. did. Mm -hmm. She actually called out her aide for um, having sent that happy memorial message out. I was wondering why she didn't show up for the ceremony because I had her name. <laughs> <laughs> I had her name in the script and she didn't show up. That is but you know what? Yeah, you know she what? said it was a mis um, She actually was supposed to put out a message that she did, but she couldn't find her last year's message. Oh. So she just put out something, but it was mm -hmm. not uh, approved. Yeah. Uh, by the commissioner. Guess yeah. what? Yeah. She's well, not the only one. Guess who else did it? Who, who else did Guess. it? Guess. President? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my you know what? Office? Okay. Here, okay. Here's my thought on that because Marsha was with me um, m Sunday yeah. and we were being told as we walked different places about Happy Memorial right. Day. Yeah. I don't think that people mean it in a negative sense. They, they just, just don't know, don't know what yes, to say. Just don't know. So what mm -hmm. I did, um, even later at that day when I was at Target, I started going around educating folks to say, I thank you so much for your recognition, but here's the reason why you should not say Happy Memorial mm -hmm. Day. And, you know, I said, you know, think about those gold star families yeah. who today is not a happy day for no, them right, because right. they lost their loved one. Mm -hmm. I said, you could say thank you for your service. Thank you for your sacrifice and have a safe day, mm -hmm. but not a happy day. Yeah. Right. And they were all like, oh, true. I didn't think about it that right, way. Right. So. Um, but it's become commercialized yeah. right, here right. in the United yeah. States. It's all about barbecues and it, and it's you know, so it's not about barbecues. Yes. 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 Now, yes. if if people take a look at all the cemeteries, mm -hmm. they'll see why grilling and barbecuing is not good for that yes. day. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you for clarifying that and for you know educating us on that. Okay. So. Um, what do you got do you guys do anything special on that day yes do you um throughout the country and even overseas um leading up to memorial day people visit back to like the site of normandy and you guys can chime in mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um they go back to normandy where you know uh there were conflicts and men served and died mm -hmm. so there were lots of celebration I personally um, was the lead on an event with Orange County Mayor um, Jerry Demings. It's the annual Memorial Day uh, commemoration mm -hmm. ceremony, um, not celebration, commemoration ceremony here in Orange County. And it was well attended, well publicized. And um, I have been doing that now for a couple of years, but this is the first year that I actually, you know, led the ceremony. Mm -hmm. And it is a moving ceremony during taps. And this always mm -hmm. gets me. During taps, mm -hmm. I broke down, yes. you know, and I'm looking at all the, the, the TV um, clips. And I saw a couple of my friends was like, wow, you was crying on stage? Yes. Because it's touching. It's very, very touching. Yes. So there are, a lot of, um, there are a lot of recognition that yes. happens around all the different counties yes. in Florida. I, I always cry for that. And I had, a, I had a friend who recently passed away. She's um, retired as well. Mm. She was retired. And it was very moving. Yeah. I couldn't, yeah. couldn't help but I talked down. to some of my friends, and they who served overseas and knew and see some of the folks who passed away, mm -hmm. you know, who witnessed their passing during the time that we serve overseas, mm -hmm. you know, that's a day that some people don't go, even go outside. They just, you know, stay um, amongst themselves, you know, just to stay focused and, you know, trying to pay tribute to that friend and or loved one mm -hmm. um, and making it a day to reflect. Mm -hmm. You know, so how did you guys spend it? I hate to put you on the spot, but I have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I attended the uh, the commemoration event that Dee mm -hmm. hosted, which she said was wonderfully uh, attended. attended yeah. um, but for me, I, I, I stayed home. I, did I, generally, I generally stay home when I was stationed in the... Uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, mm -hmm. I would go to Arlington Cemetery, mm -hmm. but other than that, I stayed home, you yeah. know, moment to reflect on yes, I people that I knew that died while in service. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, 
such a sobering and hum humbling um, day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've I've lost people in in the past, but when you go from seeing someone every day, and then their seat is empty, yeah, or yeah. you know, some something, you know, it's just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. just, it's just weird. And then you, you start to thinking, you know, what if I was there or, yeah. you know, what, mm -hmm. you know, could I could have been, been you. Like, could have been me, that, mm -hmm. that, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's a very uh, humbling and mm -hmm. sobering uh, experience. Yeah, I did the same thing. I stayed home because uh, it wasn't necessarily a pleasant day for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, my brother passed last year. Oh, and, so sorry um, to hear. And he buried in the national uh, cemetery in mm -hmm. California, so I stayed home and just, you know, communicated with my family, things like yes. that. So, yep. Yes. Well, that's good. That's we it's good to do a that. Quick break, mm -hmm. if um, I can. Oh, we're here. We're barely hearing you. Oh, maybe I'm just time bar for a break. My barrio white voice today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any better? That volume is better though, but it's still a little low. Are you guys hearing him? I'm hearing it. I'm hearing him. It maybe, oh, honey, but when. When we in the car, I'm talking. I talk a lot of Oh, let me. My glasses. I can't even see my commercials. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Okay. You're listening to the Urban Empowerment and Inspiration Station, 1680 WOKV. Jamaican Massive Wagwan. This is Deborah Earhart coming back to Orlando with my new play, Cocktails. No, not that kind of cocktail. So let Granny at home and come enjoy some laugh, some tears, and some more big laugh. Wow, she's back. Deborah Earhart, the amazing, talented Jamaican born Hollywood actress that brought us to make a farewell is back with her new funny provocative play cocktail sunday june 23rd at wakiva high school 2501 hiawasi road a popka doors open at 3 p.m and showtime is at 4 p.m to see cocktails starring deborah earhart tell your friends and family because you don't want to miss this one also featuring the charming mr sunny one doors open at 3 p.m and showtime is at 4 p.m early bird ticks are 25 dollars for the month of april purchase tickets jccnow.org or call 321-436-2457. Total proceeds to benefit JCC educational charities in Orlando and Jamaica. We can't wait to see you all again. Hey, it's your girl Abigail Hamilton, and you're listening to Noel and Beverly on the Talk It Up radio show. Keep it live. And welcome back to the Talk It Up radio show. Just want to remind our viewers that uh, the first Tuesday of every month, except for July, the Pine Hills Community Council meet for a very important meeting. Um, and uh, next week, Tuesday, I think is the first Tuesday, right, Bev? The yes, fourth? June 4th. Right, so join us at 7 p.m. at the Pine Hills Community Council. And, um, and it's a small number of people which um, make a big difference in the Pine Hills area. And it really is an important event to take a part of and be a part of it. And we invite you to come out, join the, join the membership there. And also we have... Um, Membership for businesses, honey, for students, right. professionals, memberships and, and it's a chance to meet, right. to learn, and to network. Right. And, and you this can, go ahead. It's going to be Tuesday, June 4th, 7 to 8.30 p.m. at the Pine Hills Community Center, Building B, and that's at 6408 North Jennings. Jennings. Uh, it should be East or West Jennings. Yes, yeah, that's the off um, Powers, right? right? Yes. And um, we just want to let you know that in our shooters, we have some very, very brave, very important people uh, who are doing what some of us would like to do, like myself, but never got to do it. Mm -hmm. um, fly planes and um, play with some big toys. <laughs> but anyway, um, it, ve the veterans, um, welcome. Welcome. Sorry about the late start. Um, it's always hard to switch studios when you... Um, have to wait on one show to end for yours to start <laughs> and as you can see we we have a big footprint over there we have cameras everywhere we're streaming live on youtube and facebook so we welcome you to take a look at it today while we're live if not you can visit our pages uh talk about the show and youtube and facebook and still see our previous um videos um without further ado i'm going to turn it back over to beverly and come back over and make a few tweaks i'm seeing on the street okay here. all right so um our very important. Uh, Marsha Timms has some important upcoming events to share with us. 
Well, um, well, Dean mentioned one, so I didn't know um, if anybody was aware um, that June 27th is the National PTSD Awareness oh. Day. Okay. You, you would probably be aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, so June 27th? June 27th. Okay. Yes, it's a day to set aside uh, that raises uh, public awareness mm -hmm. about issues related uh, to PTSD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, which I, until I started looking, I didn't know there was actually a uh, national uh, day for it. Um, it was uh, the so observance of this was established um, by Congress in 2010. Okay. So it became, again, an official awareness day. So is there anything happening here in Orlando for that? Um, nothing so just that. to bring awareness. Nothing yeah. that I'm organizing, but I'm sure around the country there mm -hmm. are different mm -hmm. events that, you know, folks are doing. Mm -hmm. Right. And speaking of PTSD, I'm sure there's a lot of help out there for um, veterans who um, I'm sure almost everyone yeah. suffers from that, right? Yeah, but veterans are not the only um, people who mm -hmm. suffer from PTSD, right. so I wanted to um, make that clear. I know this is a veteran program, but mm -hmm. just to let them know, if there are others out there who are suffering from PTSD, mm -hmm. you know, there's help out there. We, the veterans and or active duty service members and or reserves, uh, we go to the VA and or other private doctors through TRICARE, mm -hmm. but um, there are different organizations that assist, like the Camaraderie Foundation, mm -hmm. you know, just to name uh, one of them. Mm -hmm. So there's help out there for, you know, folks who, who do need it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it could be anything from childhood trauma that would cause someone to have PTSD. Yes. I any mm -hmm. traumatic event yeah. um, mm -hmm. that, you know, that could cause that mm -hmm. or and certain things that could uh, trigger it, the emotional response, mm -hmm. um, a memory, flashbacks, anything like that. So any traumatic event mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. could cause it. Right. Yeah. Okay. And there's something big coming up, too. Yes. In June. Yes. I'm gonna. I had that on my list. I, was, I had that on my list, and I said, "But move that over to D, <laughs> so D can talk about it." So <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna say a couple of things before I get to the big reveal, uh -huh. <laughs> and that is, um, you know, for some service members and uh, military veterans do travel overseas they take vacation just so they know uh, as of 3 june the edelweiss resort that's in garmisch i remember when they opened in 2005 Where i had reservations that? to go there in garmisch germany oh. they're now open to retirees veterans mm. with uh, you know oh, with an wow. honorable discharge okay. active oh, really? duty service member Yes. Take me, take me, take us. It's a great, it's a great, 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 really? great place. Yes, it's so located in Garmisch, so it's open. That's on our bucket so list. So it's on our bucket see them list. High fiving each other in their seat. <laughs> yeah. We're going to Germany. For me, D, put, we put together a little bucket list every year. Okay. So places this to travel. Have to be added to our yes. list. Yes. I hear, <laughs> route to I hear that stops. Germany is a very clean, they're very beautiful, great people. Green great people. place. Is that is that true? Very great people. Yes. So, um, in addition, um, in news, um, you know, um, I'm not sure about the other branches, but just so you know, the Army is opening five more brigades, and these are these brigades are opening up to women. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say we're evolving, mm -hmm. you know, that woman empowerment. Yeah. So the Army is opening up five more brigade, um, combat brigade units um, for TRICARE. What, what does that mean exactly for for civilians like us who have no clue. You mean the word brigade? Yeah. Yeah. What a does brigade? It mean when you said they're opening different arms of. Remember, okay. in in the military, there were different jobs mm -hmm. that were closed off to women. Mm -hmm. okay. So now they're opening up different roles. Okay. You know, to women. Oh. Okay. That, that's what it means. Okay. Yeah. Good. So it's not, it's not like a new... What a do you new, think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So <laughs> it's not like a new crew then. It's just no. just, no. Another, no. just more no. opportunities for women. Right, exactly. Right, right. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So a brigade yeah. is different from a battalion? I assume. Yes. yes. A brigade is higher than a battalion. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Good, good, good. So we have an insurance that we call TRICARE. And um, 
you just have to remember there are folks out there who don't utilize it. I encourage them to use it. There is an age limit for your dependents, you know, whether they're 21 or 26. It depends on if they're going to school or not going to school. Mm -hmm. So um, they need to go on the TRICARE website, TRICARE.mail, and check out because as of 15 July, they're going to be closing off some of those uh, benefits. And if you register now, you're able to catch you know, you'd be grandfathered. Mm -hmm. Deanna, yes. did you mention that um, there is some, which I don't have all the details on it. There's, uh, they're also changing the GI Bill, um, how you can leave it to your family member. Yes. So mm -hmm. uh, as, as a, the date is actually in July. So now mm -hmm. they're going to make it that between if you have active duty six to 12 years, um, that, that then you can um, will, I'll say will that, uh, transfer that to your family gift it to your yeah, family gift it member to your family mm -hmm. member so that's a change because now it's an all it's now limited to six to twelve to years. twelve years that's it yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you have to do that time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um again you know I get phone calls every day I get messages every day folks are asking about assistance you know um you know with veterans issue whether it's medical and or educational benefits, they really need to reach out to their DSO, the veteran service officers. There are different veteran service officers in the different counties, whether mm -hmm. Seminole County, Osceola County, and or um, Orange mm -hmm. County. And um, they can go online because they're different phone numbers, but that's what those guys are there for. And it's mm -hmm. free mm -hmm. because I know of veterans who are paying a whole lot of money mm -hmm. to get you know their benefits wow. and they don't need to pay oh, any wow. money whatsoever wow. those vsos are there to assist you for your charge and and, and so use VSO those benefits means veteran service officers yes, yes. okay mm -hmm. yes. use those benefits so mm -hmm. they, they they're paying for what is free yes, yes. yes. isn't that criminal yeah oh, it, it is yeah. it is you that's know but wrong. when you're you desperate yeah. Yeah. when you're yeah. desperate you know yeah. that's what you do and, you, and, and when you don't know yeah um, one of the great things that i that i uh I saw on Facebook, I don't know, I think you may be a, a part of the, the Veteran to Veterans uh, mm -hmm. group the on veterans Facebook. Yes, veterans. yes, we and both are on it, mm -hmm. it being, you know, graduation time, seeing yeah. all of these veterans yeah. who posted pics. And Major, a little closer to the mic, please. Who, who, all these okay, veterans who put, you know, the, posted these pictures of themselves in their graduation uniform and saying, look what I did on my GI Bill. Yeah. yeah. You know, exactly. yeah. And yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's never too late to, you yeah. know, to go back to school and use those benefits yeah. and, you mm -hmm. know, exactly. take yourself into your next I got career. my master's at 50. Amen. You know, Amen. so there is hope. <laughs> you, you are 50? Huh? These babies, you lie about your age. You're not 50. You're like 37. Oh, stop. <laughs> so you got our master's at 50. You're going to look at our live stream. These are some young people you know. talking about they're retired and they're veterans. I can legally retire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let me, let me just take a quick commercial break so I can get my breath, okay? Okay. <laughs> Keep us locked in. WOKB 1680 and WOKBradio.com. Are you a realtor or looking to become one? Well, we've got something for you. Whether you're new to the industry or a top producer, we would love to discuss partnership opportunities with you. As a new agent, you will need lots of training, mentorship, and support. And if you've been in the industry for a while, by now, you're probably seeking new growth opportunities. At Gold Series Realty, our business model is set up to help new agents get going quickly, and we have systems in place to help seasoned agents take their business to the next level. At some point, as a Gold Series Realtor, you're going to have the opportunity to open your own office with our guidance and support. Do not let this great opportunity pass you by. Please contact Noel Martin 407-583-7854 for a confidential one-on-one -on -one meeting. That's Noel Martin at Gold Series Realty 407-583-7854. That's 407-583-7854. Gold Series Realty. Hey, it's your girl Abigail Hamilton, and you're listening to Noel and Beverly on the Talk It Up Radio Show. Keep it loud. And welcome back to the Talk It Up Radio Show. People, I want to tell you, we feel so secure here with all these military people. This <laughs> <laughs> um, I Army to strong. Uh, yeah. right. Woo -woo. Step all into them, the balloon. Yeah. We have, <laughs> I, I saw this article on Facebook where this Jamaican born lady became the first. In Navy, the Navy. In the Navy. Yes. Yeah, first. Is first female? We also have one in the Marines as wow. well. 
Yeah. yeah. I forgot her name because I'm using all resources here. I can't yeah. do any, any searches for um, her name, but she's Jamaican um, heritage. Yes. And you should see them saluting her when she's yes. walking up on the carpet. Proud moment. My, I had chills and I, I don't know yes. what she's going through but uh, or her parents, but we just want to shout out to her name. I'll find her name later on and mm -hmm. um, talk about it. Next week's show, we want to um, pay attention, um, bring awareness to your rights. Um, victims and we know that the last election um, they have where uh, voters, people who were um, incarcerated can um, come back to get their rights back. But there's a lot more to it. Um, we're trying to get so, um, a panel together for next week's show. And um, Cassandra, if you're listening, I'm calling you out. Because <laughs> 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 I heard them on a 94.5 talking about it. I went to a, um, an event they had last Tuesday. Yeah, and I think we need to show. have it here mm -hmm. also for um, our audience. Um, so without further ado, we're going to turn it back over to um, Beverly, um, Major Alexis Carter, um, yes. uh, retired Army Surgeon. My, uh, mm. she's, she's ignoring me. I want, I want to, <laughs> to call her. She's uh, like, Marcia get it together, Tim, people. <laughs> uh, Marsha Timms and our dear friend, reti also retired, but nowhere looking like 50. She says 50 or I don't know, so we won't go there because I have to drive yeah, home. Yeah, we need to look on that yeah. birth paper. I know, to Jamaicans. I know. We need to see that birth paper. Yeah. Jamaicans, <laughs> nah, lie. 54.5. You carry it good. You carry it good, my daughter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so... um. Let me just climb up and uh, I have one more break at 6.45 and then, mm -hmm. you know, so all yours. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so as I was putting out in the news before, mm -hmm. you know, which is important, mm -hmm. the House panel is about to approve a 3.1 military pay raise. Oh, and wow. that means a lot, you know, for us mm -hmm. because yeah. for the junior enlisted, that means they get an average of about nine hundred dollars extra in their check mm. the military officers they get about fifteen hundred dollars major oh, wow. carter and uh so that's what i have as far as uh, you know uh, military news mm -hmm. but i'll talk about an important event that's coming up 244 years ago uh one of our um leading branches at the time you know was established and that is the united states army mm -hmm. which i'm a product of so the united states army was formed uh 244 years ago on 14 june mm -hmm. which is flag day mm -hmm. and this year we're again we the association of the united states army and i am the president here in uh orlando we will be hosting our military ball and um, as of right now, we have about 700 that's registered. We're still looking for people to come on out. We could seat 1,200. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in, you know, come, coming out, I'm going to put my phone number out there publicly. Mm -hmm. Call me, 407-924-0810 for additional information about tickets and sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And um, do they have to be invited by... Military I'm inviting personnel. them now. Okay. We don't discriminate. It doesn't matter if you're military or not. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we not we don't just have military that come to this event. There are folks from you know Orange County, Osceola County, and I'm talking about you know uh, officials. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a great guest speaker. The guest speaker is Lieutenant General Retired Jack Stoltz, United States Army. Mm -hmm. He was the gentleman who um, actually went into the, uh, Kuwait and then off into Iraq at the beginning of the war in 2001. Mm -hmm. And uh, great, great, great soldier. He's a soldier, soldier. And I'm sure that he is going to bring it. His speech, he's going to bring it. Mm -hmm. You'd want to listen to him. He was also the car, the chief of the Army Reserve. So he held a very, very high position. Mm -hmm. And um, he'll be there along with the 700 plus others. And mm -hmm. these two will be there as well. I'll be there. So, so you don't have to be Army. You can no. be Air Force. She's representing. <laughs> no. Yeah. So I wanted to say that. That's good. I'm sure it's going to be great. I've seen pictures. Uh, I have um, friends who are are also in the military so i've been seeing pictures every year it's mm -hmm. an annual event right? mm -hmm. maybe one year Wives you'll come and their husbands mm -hmm. and maybe one year you guys will come surprise you okay. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so that's good. So that's that's going to be on the 14th? It's No, the actual ball is on the 15th oh, the of 15th. June that's at Saturday. the Rosen Center, <coughs> which is located at 9840 International Drive. Mm -hmm. And the main event starts at 7 p.m. For all you yardies out there who always late. <laughs> Put Maybe you should say 6 p.m. Put the pound o'clock for 5 o'clock so I can show up on time. But there's a general reception that starts at 5. Mm -hmm. and, no, I'm sorry. I'll take that back. There is a recognition reception by invitation only that starts at 5. Mm -hmm. And there's a general reception that starts at 6 p.m. And everyone is welcome to, you know, the to general. that res mm -hmm. the general reception. Mm -hmm. And then we move on into the main program, which will be host by yours truly. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do great. Thank you. All right. So now Alexis has some information yes. to share with us. Yes. Um, one of the things that's kind of near and dear to my heart is Veterans Court. Mm -hmm. That's actually where I met Dee um, about almost two years ago now, mm -hmm. a year and a half ago, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. uh, the Florida legislature just passed a law to broaden the eligibility for those folks who can participate in veterans court mm -hmm. veterans court is a diversion program for veterans who have committed minor offenses and kind of steers them away from you know potential jail time or some of the more harsh pen penalties that can be associated through the criminal justice system mm -hmm. um, they get linked up with mentors um, they get provided resources for treatment that you know maybe they're in need of mm -hmm. and they get steered to resources that could hopefully and eventually keep them out of the criminal justice system mm -hmm. so the legislature passed a law which is awaiting uh, Governor DeSantis' signature, which will expand the program el eligibility to folks who have been dishonorably, di dishonorably discharged, to uh, service members who <coughs> served in, in allied armed forces, mm -hmm. and to defense contractors um, in support of um, military uh, military endeavors. So mm -hmm. I think that's a very, very, very um, good idea. Um, we have a lot of folks who support the military and are still faced with the same challenges as service members, but sometimes don't necessarily get the resources that they probably should get because, you know, maybe they didn't, they aren't necessarily wearing the uniform, yeah. but yet they're standing shoulder to shoulder next to us doing the same uh, type of work. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, if I if I could predict anything, I think Governor DeSantis would sign it. Him being also a former Navy JAG and probably understanding, you know, what this would mean um, to not just the veterans, but you know, the broader community that supports our armed forces. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a really good look. I think it's a really good look. Is there a statutory time for folks who are, you know, in need of assistance, you know, legal assistance? folks in, in the veterans court is there a statutory time or it depends on what they're in there for it depends on what they're in there for obviously if you're in there for like you know attempted murder and some of these you know i don't think they'll be in veterans harsh, court would they yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, crimes. Ask, yeah. There yeah but there's no time you just you know a lot of times prosecutors they don't know a person's full background yeah they may know you know the rap sheet which which is associated with the clerk of court's website so every time you have contact with law enforcement you know there's there's a record of that but they may not know that you served in the military mm -hmm. you know i've had a few clients that you know i was able to get into veterans court because i asked that question mm -hmm. and if you don't ask that question then you don't know what you're you know you're eligible for so mm -hmm. Um, I think there to, to, to answer your question directly there is no timeline obviously you want to utilize it sooner rather than later you don't want to get down the path of you know it, um, investing money and in, in, in preparation for trial and things of that nature um, the state expending resources to get a case you know prepared a certain way and then now they have to shift directions mm -hmm. to see if you qualify for um, veterans court but I think it's always better to kind of see if you're eligible sooner rather That's than later. Ask. Are there certain things that you know that make somebody ineligible for veterans court? Um, if you have you know quite a few prior offenses. Yeah it depends on the offense. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's really case specific but I know you know if you are I'll hate to use the term career criminal, but, you know, habitual, hab 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 uh, yeah. habitual offender, 
you're not going to qualify for veterans court just for the sake of you know because you're a veteran yeah. it's not a get out of jail free card so you oh, so it's not guaranteed because it's, you're a veteran right, right. it's, it's like not it's not guaranteed right. so they they look everything on a case by case basis um on uh, the type of the type of crime that it is and some of the factors you know associated you know with okay. the crime I'm going to so. have a disclaimer. You remember you said that we met at Veterans Court. I was not in the no, court. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying she I was, was a mentor. I was right, the only female right, men right. mentor in Veterans Court. So I'm, I, I just thought about that. Wait a minute. No. I was not in Veterans no. Court. I was a mentor. He's an angel. <laughs> Some of the, most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah, I was not in Veterans Court. But Veterans Court, seriously, a lot of people don't know about it until they're actually playing in mm -hmm. it but it is a good tool though mm -hmm. it is a, a good tool it's just that sometimes there are challenges with people following through with it because mm -hmm. then i like tech telling mm -hmm. right. right you know right so then i like tech telling. it's not it's not you're in the program and that's it you got to put in the work yeah you got to show up you got to mm -hmm. you know comport yourself mm -hmm. accordingly mm -hmm. and a lot of these folks you know it clicks they remember you mm -hmm. know i see them at the podium they're standing at you know parade rest mm -hmm. uh y you know they they understand that okay i'm getting this second chance i'm getting this opportunity mm -hmm. um and a lot of them are grateful for it yes. and i think our society is better for it when we take the time to acknowledge that you know there may be certain um circumstances and 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 things that others have been exposed to that the rest of the civilian society may not just be aware of mm -hmm. that can motivate some of the, the their actions and behaviors yeah, so you said they have to not only show up but participate so do you guys actually um give them things that they have to follow right so there's and, there's, and there's there's there's, there's counseling yeah yeah, the, counseling the, trial, yeah so the, the, depending on therapy, your interview and the, and the assessment they'll say okay you need to do this you need okay. you, you need substance abuse counseling okay you your need, va appointment yeah your va appointment you know batterers intervention okay. impulse okay. control mm -hmm. okay. your court dates your court dates community service okay community service all so, okay. these all these different types and of they're things. held accountable so if they don't do it then there's consequences oh yeah oh yeah oh, oh, yes. oh yeah the judge there he doesn't play mm -hmm. yeah yes there are definitely consequences not just a slap on the hand he's right. very very firm mm -hmm. yeah since, yeah. It, since mm -hmm. we have military so can i have That's permission, good. permission to play commercial please permission granted okay <laughs> <laughs> go ahead you're listening to the urban empowerment and inspiration station 1680 wokv jamaican massive wagwan this is deborah Earhart coming back to orlando with my new play cocktails no not that kind of cocktail so let granny at home and come enjoy some laugh some tears and some more big laugh wow she's back deborah Earhart, the amazing talented jamaican born hollywood actress that brought us jamaica farewell is back with her new funny provocative play cocktail sunday june 23rd at Kiva High School, 2501 Hiawassee Road, Apopka. Doors open at 3 p.m. and showtime is at 4 p.m. to see Cocktails, starring Deborah Earhart. Tell your friends and family because you don't want to miss this one. Also featuring the charming Mr. Sunny One. Doors open at 3 p.m. and showtime is at 4 p.m. Early bird tickets are $25 for the month of April. Purchase tickets jccnow.org or call 321-436-2457. Total proceeds to benefit JCC educational charities in Orlando and Jamaica. We can't wait to see you all again. Hey, it's your girl Abigail Hamilton, and you're listening to Noel and Beverly on the Talk It Up Radio Show. Keep it live. And welcome back to yes, the Talk It Up Radio Show. Um, I'm going to put all the mics on by there. Um, coming up next is the Jamming Radio Show. Um, it's going to be an Irish show today because both of them are here. In fact, we're in the same blue shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we're all, all wearing blue, blue shirt. Today's, today's blue shirt day. We got the memo. <laughs> anyway, we only have a few minutes left, so I'm going to turn it over to the lovely um, staff we have there, the ladies um, from the mil retired military lady. You know what? No, shut up. <laughs> 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 Okay, so so that was some very good information regarding the um, court, the legal system. Yes, yeah. yes. I, you know, one thing that I promote, and in, in, in um, maybe um, Alexis can stress on this, is um, there are so many veterans. I remember when I was in, so many soldiers who um, were immigrants, and they had no clue as to their statutory time, 
they got end up getting kicked out of the military because you know they didn't do their paperwork mm -hmm. and to me you know like i took advantage of it i went in the army in 1982 by night by 1989 i was swearing in at the courthouse in norfolk no one told me to i took the initiative went to jag got the information mm -hmm. Then I went and did the interview at the courthouse, and six months later, I was doing my interview. And it turned around to be a good thing because years later, I needed a clearance for my job, and I was able to get my clearance with no issues because I was, you know, a legal <coughs> U.S. citizen. But there's a lot of service members out there, and now veterans, who have no clue about the process because they don't take the time to educate themselves and or go and find, you know, the resources. Mm -hmm. Right. So... As, as service members, you have a, a expedited track, if you will, to citizenship. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your application is the same application, but your application gets fast-tracked. You get like mm -hmm. a special, special treatment, if you will. And, you know, when I was a JAG on active duty working in legal assistance, we had the opportunity to process a lot of uh, uh, citizenship applications mm -hmm. uh, for, for active duty. Uh, I'm not sure if that same fast-track applies when you get out though um if you're if you're a veteran however it should be easier because you know you've been stationed all these different places you have proof you have proof of where, you, where you've been stationed you have a mm -hmm. dd214 you mm -hmm. have some sort of security clearance that could you know expedite the process the mm -hmm. process where you know regular lay folks who, who who don't who don't have that background who probably had a very transient life you know lifestyle if you will it's a little bit harder for them to mm -hmm. document all, all the places that they that they've lived mm -hmm. um but yeah definitely take advantage of it you know there's so many um immigrants who support our military members of our military you know to the walls point earlier the naval officer her name is commander janice smith mm -hmm. she's the first jamaican american to become the commander of a destroyer in the united states navy and actually she's the only she's the only the second african-american woman to command a destroyer and she's the first female commanding officer of the oscar Au austin which is the name of the destroyer that she commands wow. so her name know, is janice smith janice smith wow yeah. Well, on that note, did you guys see uh, where this year, 2019 graduation from West Point and yes. for the Air Force McCat? Oh, McCat yeah, that was yes. The number of oh, African American, American females. Yeah. Yeah. That beautiful. was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Those photos yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like the, the mm -hmm. biggest number mm -hmm. of graduates yeah. in a class that's ever been had. Mm -hmm. We West have had. Point and from the academy. Uh, mm -hmm. Females uh, um, graduating from Ranger School. Um, you know, some of the prestigious military, you know, mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. um, females are, are really, really setting, setting the standards yes. for others, you know, and I love it. That's good. Mm -hmm. I love it too. I love it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it too. We kicking butt. <laughs> love yes. It too. Yeah, yes. we kicking butt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So at, um, the the ball is coming up yes is that the latest thing that's coming up yes the ball is coming up the the, the deadline to purchase ticket was actually um today okay. but i'm going to extend it mm -hmm. um my registration folks don't know yet mm -hmm. but i'm trying to i'm going to extend it because um i do want people to take the opportunity to come out it's not just you know a night for drinking and partying mm -hmm. you know come out and learn about the rich history of you know the united states army you know see your seasoned veterans those are the guys who served in world mm -hmm. war ii the korean war um vietnam and also you know the younger um veterans who served in um in Iraq and you know other conflicts you know since Vietnam mm -hmm. so that's an opportunity and for you to meet your active duty soldiers there are a few active duty soldiers that's going to be there there's also you know um, service members from other branches that attend this event as well is there an age limit because this would be great for maybe high school graduates who are thinking of joining um, age limit for the ball yeah 
No, there's not. Well, I don't want any babies there. No, but, I mean, <laughs> um, 18, I'm not sure if you have to be 21 to go or you can't. No, you, you don't. There's not an age limit because I mm -hmm. used to take my grandson there. So mm -hmm. there's not an age limit. There is um, alcohol consumption, but it's being monitored because right. naturally you're not going to let your junior of course um, guests drink. Right. Uh, we do have bartenders who monitor that, but mm -hmm. it is open to the public. So this would be great for families and, oh, yeah. and yes. um, graduates who are thinking of it, but yes. not quite sure yet. Yes, yes. Right. And again, they can go on our chapter website, ausa.org mm -hmm. or ausa-sunshine.org mm -hmm. or call me at 407-924-0810. Again, my name is First Sergeant D. Jones, United States Army, retired, and we'll get you squared away. You have a seat that's waiting on you. Awesome. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, just to wrap it up, um, we're top. We said the PTSD mm -hmm. um, day of commemoration. Day of yes. Yeah, well, PTSD. June twenty seventh. Yeah, awareness. Yeah, day. Yes, June, June twenty seventh. Mm -hmm. Yes. We got to so, get the young lady in yeah. here so she oh. can tell. So she can tell the younger generation out there who's listening. What is you it know, like to have your parents? Yeah. As as. What a, did you think um, about your dad being in the military? Well, she want to be on camera. You got to <laughs> yeah. Go sit over there with your dad. Go closer. Mm -hmm. Sandwich in. <laughs> What's your so, name? Tell us your name first. My name's Isabella Carter. Get closer. Isabella. To That's a beautiful name. Mm -hmm. She's beautiful too. Yeah. No. <laughs> I can barely hear her, but uh, but I'm sitting right next to you, so so you oh. gotta sp you gotta speak loudly when you're on, mm -hmm. on the. So mic what's your thing. name? Isabella Carter. There you go. Great, great. So what do you think of your dad being in the military? How did his going away, because he deployed, how did that affect you? What did you think about it? At first, I thought it was cool, because I thought it, he was, like, special. Mm -hmm. Then I felt a little sad, because I didn't Aww. get to see him a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he yeah. came back, and it was better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would you think if he had to go back again? Would you support him going back? Yeah, you I would? support him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. What well, would you tell the other children out there? Um, uh, because most people think war is just totally bad. It's all bad. Yeah. What would you say to your friends, you know, who, who may be listening or they're going to watch the, the taped <laughs> um, video later? What would you tell them about your experience being, you know, the daughter of a, a, a soldier that's still serving? It's going to be hard sometimes mm -hmm. but they're doing it for a very good reason a good purpose mm -hmm. and it'll get better eventually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would you join the military and if so what branch you wouldn't she join the military no. she <laughs> said no <laughs> she said no. <laughs> no and your reason it's not something that I've ever considered doing or something that I'd want to do. Mm -hmm. But you'll continue to <laughs> support it, right? Yeah. yeah. I'd continue there we support. go. We need those mm -hmm. two. Yeah. 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 But time can change yeah. things, change how you think. Yeah. You know. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know said. in about 10 <laughs> years from now, I'm going to see you marching across the stage in uniform. Mm -hmm. Watch. And yes. What, and what would Lieutenant you Carter. Yeah. All over again. What would you say to the children whose parents or maybe one parent is deployed right now and they're feeling sad? What would you say to them? That it's normal to miss your parent. But again, know that they're doing it for a very good reason okay. and they're not going to be gone forever. Mm -hmm. and they'll come back and it'll be okay nice oh, that's I love nice. that they'll thank definitely you. come back yes. they'll definitely yes. come back yes thank you thank you what school do you go to Altamont Christian oh Altamont. represent yeah. what grade are you in <laughs> what grade did you just finish just school's finished out right grade. yay the sixth grade <laughs> A's and B's um, yeah awesome good mm, job daddy's good girl job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know we put you on the spot, yeah. but thank you so much. You're well. did a wonderful <laughs> job. Great job. So again, um, we want to say thank you for our listening audience for listening today. <laughs> I hope you were educated and you learned something new um, regarding our veterans. And every month you can catch us same time, same place. 
fourth the fourth Saturday it's usually of the fourth each Saturday, month. but we had to we had a special to show today. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I have a ca um something that I wanted sure, to bring up ahead. before we go okay. off. Um, day before yesterday, I attended a going uh, a home going service for a gentleman who was not a veteran, mm -hmm. but he was a veterans advocate. Mm -hmm. His name um is Ro Gallard, and um I I don't know if his family's listening, but if friends you know, in the community or listening, um, and you were not there, just say that uh, he his service was very, very proper. It was fun. We laughed. We cried. He was a champion in the community, mm -hmm. even though, like I said, he was not a veteran. Um, he passed away suddenly yeah. two Sundays ago, wow. and I just hope that um, his family, you know, find peace in his passing mm -hmm. and may his soul rest in peace yes my mm -hmm. condolences to his family all right so thank you for joining us today um i think countryman's ready jamming vibes countryman you're ready <laughs> big up so um <laughs> join us next week same time same place for another great show have a great week god bless you all we still have two minutes too.